in the verses that Flo has have just read in Mark, um, verse 7, Mark 16, the angel sitting inside the tomb instructs the women. He has something to direct them to. They have faithfully come to perform their last service for their beloved teacher and leader. And this angel directs the, the women to go, tell his disciples and Peter, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where we're there, we'll, we're there, he will see them, just as he told you. Now, just as he told you, what does that mean? Exactly what was it that Jesus said to his disciples previously when he told them he would meet them in Galilee? That this angelic like young man really wanted to make sure that these two women, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, had to go and tell. All the uh, disciples had scattered. Um, they each ran their own way and Peter, especially Peter, because Peter had vowed first not to leave Jesus. So especially Peter, the Lord wanted to make sure and the last heard that he wanted to meet him in Galilee. So the last time Peter was spoken of in the book of Mark, he was warming himself by a fire. And he was denying again and again and again that he even knew Jesus. And this was just as Jesus had prophesied before the cock crowed twice early, early in the morning. That passage that says what Jesus exactly told them is found in Mark 14. And precisely in verse 28. But the passage is where Jesus is letting them know that they will all desert him. And that's also the passage where where Peter stands up and vows that he will never, ever leave Christ, that he will go with him to the death. And as soon as Peter does that, then all the rest of the disciples stand up and they vow just as Peter vowed. Nevertheless, in, at that time then, in verse 28, Jesus promised, after I am raised up, precisely this, after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. So in that one sentence, there are two promises. Jesus is saying, I promise that I will be resurrected. Glory, hallelujah. He's saying, I promise I will be resurrected. And he kind of say, says this in a matter of fact kind of way, after I'm raised up. And then the second promise is, I will go before you and meet you in Galilee. Yet this first casual kind of promise is of course the most important promise and if, to be raised up because we know that if Jesus declares that he will def uh, defy or, or overcome his own death, then he will be authentic in any other promise that he makes. His promise of eternal life to the believer is authentic. So that when these women go and tell, then what do they really go and tell? They go and tell, he is risen. He is risen indeed, amen? amen? He will meet us, these women say, in Galilee, because he's risen. He couldn't, he couldn't meet them unless he had rose first. After a, lo a long, dark night, again, the sun rises. 
Amen. Jesus isn't just a good teacher. Jesus isn't even just a powerful, miraculous healer. Jesus is who he said he is, the son of God, come from God, to return to God in glory, seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, in the kingdom of God. And we may take him at his word. Jesus is authentic in all of his promises. Jesus promised, for the Son came into the world not to condemn the world, but that through the world through that the world through him might be saved. And this word saved has a root in the Greek that is called sozo. And sozo is a wonderful word in the Greek. Sozo means to save, yes, but sozo also means to heal. And so when we're saved, we are saved into eternal life as well as we are healed, completely healed now and continually through to our eternal life when we're completely healed. Jesus promised, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The wages, though, of sin is death. But Jesus, glory, hallelujah, Jesus has delivered us from sin and death. After a long, dark night of death, again, the Son rises. Amen. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? That's what Corinthians says. Jesus is our victor. Glory, hallelujah. Go tell what Jesus promises. The angel instructed them, go and tell what Jesus promised them. He is risen, he is risen indeed, and he will meet us. The angel said, especially Peter. Peter's heart had sunk as he warmed himself in front of that fire as soon as he heard that cock crow. He was likely feeling worthless. He was disappointed. He felt dejected. He was frustrated inside of himself because he really did mean it when he said that he would stick with Jesus to the end, to the death. He would stick to Jesus. Nevertheless, even though he failed, the resurrected Lord Jesus especially wanted, especially wanted to make sure Peter knew that he was yet chosen. Yet chosen of the Lord as the rock, the foundation of the church. You remember how, how miraculously and, and um, charismatically Peter preached at Acts, in Acts 1 at Pentecost. The Lord Jesus Christ still wanted Peter because God's gifts and calling can't be taken back. Jesus had declared of Peter when he named him that Peter, Cephas, he promised, he said, and I tell you, you are Peter. In Matthew 16, 18, you are Peter, and on this walk I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Go and tell Peter, what Jesus promised, the women were told, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Jesus, glory, hallelujah, Jesus will meet any one of us in this room where we are at. He met them in Galilee when the dark night was over because again the sun rose. And anyone, anyone in this room or in the sound of, of my voice who has any uncertainty in feelings like 
possibly like Peter had toward Jesus and himself. Just let me tell you that Jesus, having loved us, loves us to the end. Jesus loves us forever. And Jesus loves us deeply. No matter what we may come to think of ourselves or our relationship between um, ourselves and Jesus, Jesus still wants us. There is no greater love that a person can have than to lay down his life. And Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down freely. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to pick it up. But he didn't pick it up. That's the point. When he was resurrected, he had to help the Holy Spirit to get up from the grave. He was talking about he could have refused to go to the cross. He had power to lay down his life for all of us, and he had power to pick it up, and he chose to lay down his life. There is no greater love. We are chosen, when we're chosen of the divine, we are divinely chosen and remain divinely chosen. God's gifts are not ever taken back. God's calling is not taken back. Jesus will meet us, each and every one, wherever we need to be met at. Because Jesus goes ahead of us in order to ensure our victory as we walk the path that we are to walk in our purpose in him. We walk to victory. The dark night is once again over again and again. The sun rises. Go and tell what Jesus promises. Amen. This is a day of new beginnings.